Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We're excited you're joining us for episode 11, and we are gathered up here in the church balcony. My name is Jeff Terpstra. I'm the preaching minister here at Norwin Christian Church, and I'm sitting on the same sofa as Joshua Persall, our executive minister. Hey, folks. It's great to be with you today. Looking forward to the conversations. As well as Allison Murray, our director of children's ministries. Glad to be back. All right. So today, our topic is hospitality, specifically Christian hospitality and the conviction that God has given us to be hospitable to those around us, to be a good neighbor. A lot of different idioms and ways you can put it, but we want to be uh, salt and light to those around us. We want to offer our homes. We want to offer um, ourselves to others. And so they ultimately can know the love that Jesus has for them. And I think that's a hard reality for for Christians that the love that we experience through Christ is also ultimately represented by us to others um, when we're maybe sometimes at our lowest <laughs> when when we're with our neighbors or with others and it, I mean it's also when we're at our best anytime we're interacting with others they're getting an understanding of what it what a Christian is you know if, if they're not a Christian and so they get to see the love of Christ through us, and that can be humbling, but it can also be uh, encouragement and inspirational to be a better host, uh, to show Christian hospitality to others. So, one of the things that I asked you guys to think about was uh, some different experiences that you've had with others, maybe other people that have been uh, just great hosts, have, have shown hospitality uh, in your life and what that's different, um, been different in your life and how you've seen that. So uh, maybe Allison, start. How have you seen Christian hospitality played out uh, by others? Sure. One of my earliest um, examples of Christian hospitality is my mom. Um, she really goes out of her way to make people feel at home in in her home in my in my mom and dad's home and um she really likes to go to you know the next level tons of food she likes to have you know little party favors or gifts mm. to send home or warm cozy socks to wear on a cold winter day but it's not because she's showing off it's because she loves people so big that she wants them to know that they have a place in their home and they have that they're welcomed. Um, a, a more recent example of hospitality is um, a former women's small group leader of mine. And what I love about her example is in that small group, there was no food, we didn't bring snacks, we didn't share a meal but I get the exact same feeling in her home that I get mm. when I enter my parents' home. It's one of peace, mm. it's one of rest, and it's one of saying, come just as you are. I wanna invite you to the feet of Jesus. And so I think it's important for us to see as Christians, yes, God commands us. In Romans 12, we see practice hospitality. It's not, if this is your gifting, do it. It's Christians, you need to be hospitable. But in both of those examples that I provided, they may on the surface look really different from one another, but at the heart of it, it's an open door and a chance to come in and find rest from the hustle and bustle of daily life. And I think they're both perfect examples of what Christian hospitality means. Very cool, thanks for sharing. Joshua, what about you? Some some people that you see as very hospitable people. Yeah, so grow, growing up, my um, my parents were hospitable. I, I I didn't even know the word then, but it was it was it was who who they who they were and who they are. And and now looking back, I'm like, oh wow, it was just it was just normal for me, you know, that we had people in our home and things like that. But the time that sticks in my mind where it really impacted me a lot and and uh, my family a lot was when we were. Uh, Aaron and I were newly married, and we were kind of new to a church at the time. And I was not on staff; I wasn't in a leadership role. And but there were there were these families that were like in their fifties, maybe, and you know they had maybe teenage children or grown children, and they just they just took us under their wing, and they would invite us into their homes and take us out to eat, and and they just really 
it, the impact was was huge. And it's one of those things you didn't know it at the time, but to look back. And it's one thing as you get to know somebody, maybe in a public space at a church building, but then when they invite you into their home, you see their books, you see the things they have on their wall, you see, you just see more of their life. In this case, we saw people who were following Christ passionately and by being invited into their homes, it made just so so much more of an impact on us and uh, some just really powerful mentoring relationships in our life in that in that particular season, which provided a foundation for how who we wanted to become as a married couple and then who we wanted to become as a family and we what, what we wanted our children to experience as well. Yeah, very cool. Thanks for sharing. You know, when you talked about um, newlyweds, I can think of a time in my life right before getting married i was doing my internship for for college and doing it at a church that was about two hours away from the school i was attending and so i needed housing on the weekends when i went down there for service and as a youth ministry intern and so it was a little old lady a widow um in her 80s and had a spare bedroom and i would go there and it was a very quick weekend because there's a lot of things happening at the church, and so I was in and out. But she, on Sundays, often after service as, as a uh, relaxation, she had she would watch golf a lot, and so we would sit in some recliners and watch golf. She would serve me strawberry ice cream with a real silver spoon because she said the real silver spoon made a difference, made it taste different. And so she would have that prepared when I was done with services on Sunday. Uh, she knew I was getting married. She was, she, she really tried to get me to take everything from her house. Uh, she said, <laughs> newlyweds need furniture and you need this. And uh, she really wanted me to take her dining room table because she knew tables were so important to gather around. And she said, you know, as a family, you need to gather around a table. You need to eat together. So important. And I just remember her hospitality um, in that moment. And, you know, we lost contact and um, but she was just a sweet, sweet old lady that took me in during that time. And, you know, maybe hospitality in that sense looked a little bit different, right? It wasn't inviting somebody over for a meal on a Saturday night or two families doing life together, but it was in that season exactly what I needed. Um, and so that's the difference it, it made in my life. And I got to, to see that example. So, Allison, going back to you, is there. <clears throat> Is there a specific way that those examples of hospitality have changed your view of hospitality or how you've now been more of a hospitable person towards others because of those examples? Um, absolutely. I think um, it, the biggest way is that I've learned from both of those people that it's really about people more than presentation. And mm. so while before I welcome people into my home, I'm still going to clean the bathrooms <laughs> and run the vacuum that, yeah. you know, that's still important, but I no longer get that like nervous feeling, like what are people going to think about my home or what are they going to think when they taste my food? Because I realize that that's not really what it's all about. And we even have um, it kind of in our entryway, we have a sign that's hanging with like a, a nice saying, but the, the crux of the saying is that you are welcome here. Mm. Come in from the cold, hard wor world and have a seat and be part of what we're doing inside this home. And so both my mom and, and my small group leader um, have shown me the importance of, of putting the priority on the people that are coming into my home and that I don't need to get so concerned. And maybe sometimes it's gonna look like a full meal Maybe sometimes it's going to look like delivery pizza on a piece on a paper plate, but most importantly, is just to open that door and let people come in. Mm, yeah, and to speak into that a little bit, and you know, I remember when you guys were looking for a house, and one of the big things of the house was mm -hmm. we have to be able to host a small group. Mm -hmm. And how many people go into buying a house thinking this needs to serve other people, not just our family? And you guys have. Like you said, you've had that example of hospitality growing up, and you guys have now been that example of hospitality for so many others in in the way that you treat small group, is the way you treat family members and friends. And so I know me and my wife and my family have really been influenced by that too, and we've been recipients of it. And so thank you for allowing God to work through your heart 
in that way and to show others that love. Joshua, what about you when you think of the ways you've been changed by other people's examples of hospitality? Yeah, and this is one thing that just uh, just my wife Erin and I talking about, you know, what hospitality looks like is realizing that different things serve different people in different ways. And instead of only being hospitable in the way that I know or only in the way that that feels the best to me is try to be hospitable in a way that that the greatest number of people can feel comfortable. Or if you know that someone coming over has some preferences to try to be aware of those as mm-hmm. well. And so that that's that's something that that I've learned and, and that I've grown in is like, you know, this this wouldn't be my way, but I think the people coming over would like it this way. So, you know, maybe it costs a little bit of money, maybe it costs a little time, maybe it's just not the way I would do it. But to do it with joy because it serves somebody else. So it's been, a, it's been a growing experience for me in that way. Yeah. Joshua always turns the heat on when he knows I'm going to be in the room, <laughs> which I greatly appreciate because it's not his way, but it, <laughs> he knows it's the preference of other people. So he's willing to do that. I appreciate it. We're all trying to get along back there with yeah. that heater, right? <laughs> so something that's been influential for me as I think about hospitality is the way uh, my family has been accepted by so many here at Norm Christian Church. Um, we we don't have family in the area, which it's, it's hard. Uh, as my children grow, it's hard to know. Uh, they don't have grandparents really close. They don't have aunts and uncles really close. They don't have cousins really close. Um, and it it never fails to make me emotional and to be thankful for those times we do have with family when when there are people in the church that invite us over for Christmas dinner, invite us over for Easter, invite us over for um, just a game night, because it's 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 that connection that's so much more than those things. It's it's a connection that makes a difference in my life and my wife's life and in my kids. And so, you know, thinking of this podcast, we know most of our listeners are, are going to be Christian. Um, and so we're not really necessarily making a case, a biblical case for hospitality. Uh, we just want to make a case that it's 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 important to God and it's important in our lives and we've seen it happen and and we're really trying to emphasize that a little bit. Um, and and then thinking in our culture, in the American culture, it is a it's a culture of individuality. It's a culture of um, sometimes isolation and and you know thinking. I even was reading about how we do that and for our kids we give our kids each their own bedroom and we give them their own space and how from a young age we're already emphasizing you yourself your safety your isolation and giving a kid their own room is not a bad thing Uh, but but that's becomes a priority of us and so with that hospitality becomes even more important because it becomes um it goes against the grain and and it can make a bigger difference because of that and when the culture at large is saying well i can do my own thing i can stay by myself everything is fine and as christians we want to say well actually life together is better and community is really important and so i want you guys to speak into that a little bit how how have you seen or how have you experienced hospitality going against the grain of American culture and the impact that can make um, in a family or in someone's life? Yeah, so we, we, live, uh, we live in a cul-de-sac. And so it kind of provides that opportunity for, you know, here's, I don't know, six or eight houses that mm-hmm. kind of just share that proximity together. And not long after we moved into Pennsylvania on our cul-de-sac, there was a Christian family lived across the road from us and they just invited everybody in the cul-de-sac over for a Christmas party to their house. And I was like, you know, how, how cool is that? You know, that they were doing that. And then that particular family actually moved away, but then there was another family that lived on the cul-de-sac who kind of took up that tradition Mm -hmm. of, you know, inviting everybody over. And it's, you know, sometimes there can be people that live on the cul-de-sac and, and let, you know, sometimes you can go a long time without seeing them because, you know, because we park in our garages and we have heat and air conditioning in our houses. Mm -hmm. And because, because we have so many of the basic necessities of life, we don't have to depend on each other like we might've used to back during the more farming days where we, you were kind of depending on your neighbors for more things. So that's just been a cool thing. That's where, where I've seen that, Hey, this is, 
this is exceptional. This is not happening on every cul-de-sac and how neat that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, somebody that I, an author and speaker that I really like in regards to hospitality um, is Amy Hannon and she is a Christian and um, talks a lot about just how to share hospitality with the people around you in an everyday kind of way. And her, her main motto is love, welcome, serve. And she gets that from first peter 4 above all love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins offer hospitality to one another without grumbling if anyone serves they should do so with the strength that god provides so that in all things god may be praised through jesus christ and so to me i think that that idea of love welcome serve is very countercultural. Mm -hmm because we have cloistered ourselves off with our own family or our own little group. And so maybe we don't remember very well what it means to show love to people outside of that circle. We definitely are not coming and going in our neighborhood the way that we used to. So we don't always do a great job of welcoming. And then serving is really a, a challenge. You have to love someone in order to want to serve them. And so um, I know that Jim and I could go way farther in in our interactions in our neighborhood that's definitely an area that we could improve but i think of um the two next door neighbors on either side and those are probably the ones that we do have the most relationship with and the one is a young couple with kids that are younger than ours and just the way that if they're on vacation we water their plants mm -hmm. if we're on vacation they check on our pool and just kind of that back and forth and that interaction with one another. We may not be going into their home, but we are, it's still a form of hospitality because of the way we care for one another. And then our neighbors on the other side are an older couple. And um, just to watch Jim go over and make sure that their um, driveway is cleared in the winter and things like that. And she's just such a neat person like she's very active in her yard and keeping everything tidy and things like that and she's so appreciative um of of any time that that she gets help from others but um it's maybe just looking a little bit outside the box and if if hospitality it doesn't always have to look like welcoming people inside but how can we have positive interactions even just outside in our yards um because people are usually just just kind of staying to themselves in today's society. Yeah, and that can offer an additional challenge to hospitality is that person has to want that hospitality that you're <laughs> offering. You can't force sure. them to come over. You can't force them to like you or respond <laughs> to what you're doing. Um, so some, sometimes people won't respond, but we do the best with what we can. I think for my wife and I, um, you know, when we when we moved to the house we're currently in, we did a lot of praying about neighborhoods and areas that God would lead us to, and uh, really in a place where uh, some neighbors have really responded to hospitality. And hospitality is probably not one of my most natural gifts, um, but between my wife and I, we've really been able to see. Um, what hospitality towards others looks like in some very real ways. I think we had a, a general concept of it, and, and there were some ideas we always batted around, similar to your neighbors, Joshua, have said, hey, could we do a Christmas party for our neighborhood? What if, I remember um, reading an article about one Christian that during the summer, they would just set up a table, a huge table in their backyard, and just put out a road sign and say, hey, come on over for dinner, it's gonna be this time, and you know, with the age of technology, there's a lot of different groups you can be a part of for your neighborhood and say, mm -hmm. put something on the group. And we always had that idea of doing something like that. Um, one realization of, of an idea happened last year with a Halloween party that we did. And what we purposefully did was to invite church people as well, our church friends. So we invited people that lived in our neighborhood and then people that went to our church. That way, it wasn't just us as the sole light bringers to that event, if you would, uh, but many church people were there having conversations that we couldn't have because there were so many people. And we didn't 
really have the best yard for it necessarily because everything we tried to do everything outside we did s'mores and movie and uh, some laser tag for the kids and we don't have the biggest yard but it was still a fun event and some people mingled and uh, just some some different things we were able to do out of that hey we had a concept for an idea we want to uh, do something more and so we were able to do that um, and now I think our house has become an attraction point for a lot of kids and so after school uh, a lot of the kids on the bus are looking for me or my wife to give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down thumbs up means yeah you can come over and hang out thumbs down means no we're busy tonight can't come over um, and my wife often reminds me man these kids come from from different places mm -hmm. and so we're gonna feed them we're gonna let them hang out for a little bit and um, have a good time and then we have to send them home at some point but a lot of times they're they're excited to come over and so we've been able to see the fruits of that hospitality in some different ways but one thing that has helped me again come out of my natural state of maybe not being so hospitable is uh, this book by rosaria butterfield called the gospel comes with a house key and i did a sermon series and one thing that came out of the sermon series was was just a quote from rosaria that the gospel comes with a house key and the the byline of the book is practicing radically ordinary hospitality in a post-christian world and so i wanted to do some more research about her and so i bought this book and she talks about ordinary hospitality and because of our christian because of our nation being post-christian because we live in a place of individualism it's the ret the ordinary acts of hospitality that become radical um you know like you said being invited over to a neighbor's house for a christmas celebration is is crazy maybe years ago it wasn't uh, but now it is and so how can we just do these ordinary acts of hospitality and so i want to uh, read just the opening of her book here um to give you just a glimpse of, of what this is and rosary butterfield is uh, becoming more and more popular she has some different youtube videos out and she has really has an interesting testimony uh, she was a uh, women's study professor at syracuse university i th think i've been accused of saying that word wrong syracuse syracuse i don't know what it is but i think you got it right uh, thank you appreciate that uh, had a radical transformation to become a christian and uh, left her identity of uh, being a lesbian behind and is now married to a pastor and uh, just a really advocate for walking in the way that christ would walk and so this is how she opens her book she says radical ordinary hospitality those who live it see strangers as neighbors and neighbors as family of god they recoil at reducing a person to a category or a label they see god's image reflected in the eyes of every human being on earth they know they're like meth addicts or sex trade workers. They take their own sins seriously, including the sin of selfishness and pride. They take God's holiness and goodness seriously. They use the Bible as a lifeline with no exception. Those who live out radical, ordinary hospitality see their homes not as theirs at all, but as God's gift to use for the furtherance of His kingdom. They open doors, they seek out the underprivileged, they know that the gospel comes with a house key. They take biblical theology seriously. And then I want to skip ahead a little bit, and she lists six different things that we can do to think about hospitality in a more serious way and some of the, the roots of hospitality. And, um, you know, it, like you said, Allison, it's, it's, it's knowing uh, that it's more about people than presentation. It's, it's, there, there's something to the presentation and the things around and cleanliness. Uh, but there's things that are at a, at a deeper root level maybe uh, so first thing she talks about is respecting the reality of your neighbor's lives and households uh, it gets a little bit to what you said joshua earlier about um, their preferences and the reality of who they are as people second thing she says and feel free to interrupt me if you want to comment on any of these pray that you would be a safe person to hear the burdens of your neighbor's hearts I think in that one, we have to know that sometimes we have to sacrificially set our own burdens aside so that we can take on the burdens of our neighbors and maybe making sure that we have other people 
you know, maybe a church friend or, you know, a close relative or something that we can share those things with so that when we're interacting with these neighbors that need to see the light of Jesus and the peace that he brings, Mm -hmm. we can just be a listener and not then like mirror back all of our junk at the same time, but really just hear from them and let them know that that their life matters to us. Yeah, and it's going to start way back when you just show up to shovel their driveway or to bring in their mail. Um, you know, somebody's not going to admit their deepest, darkest fears and struggles the first time you meet. It mm-hmm. takes investment and in, in time and priorities. Uh, number three, understand the biblical difference between holiness and goodness. And don't be afraid to celebrate the goodness of your unbelieving neighbors. That can be a little bit of uh, that can be a tricky line, you mm-hmm. know, because we, we've been studying in First John a little bit here and just recognizing the sin problem that we have in dealing with that and how being good is doesn't doesn't at all make you saved. But just to what you're saying, how important it is that we see God's image on every person because that's going to help us love them, and also we have to kind of check our judgment because it's going to be easy as we meet people that may have very little idea what it means to follow jesus we have to check our judgment at the door in a lot of ways yeah number four don't accuse of ill will people who hold to a different theology so this can be giving them the benefit of the doubt this can be listening before talking being slow to speak number five know why it matters most that we are made in god's image and joshua you talked to this a little bit already but knowing that person isn't just an issue that person isn't just a us versus them and they're a them but they're made in god's image i think it's so easy for us to value people based on behavior you know and we Mm -hmm. we we value god's god's standards and god's instructions but we also need to see the mostly the inherent value that God has given all of his creations, and that'll help us see people on an equal playing field. Yeah. And then the last one is this, start somewhere, start today. That really encourages me, especially because in regards to neighbors, I feel like I do have a ways to go in my mm. interaction with them. And so that sounds doable, just to yeah. pick, pick one thing mm-hmm. and do that. We don't have to have the entire neighborhood over first and foremost. You know, maybe after all these years of living in our home, maybe we just need to invite one family in, Mm -hmm. you know, or maybe we need to make time for more chats in the backyard as the weather starts to get nice. Or maybe I need to make a loaf of bread for a neighbor and have a discussion in their doorway as I hand them the banana bread or whatever it is. So that, that last one makes it feel like it's something that is doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we can overcomplicate it. And we, we have pictures of grandeur when it comes to this, of like lives being changed and neighborhoods being on fire for God because this, this spark that was started with our hospitality. Um, and that, that's great. That's a great picture, but it does start small. And it starts with investments of time and um, giving other people priority and so um you know start today start simple um personalize it make it your own you might have heard an idea or something that that we talked about during this podcast and you think oh i could i could replicate that with my neighbors and it might just not work because your neighbors are different than our neighbors and so find out what what your neighbors need and be willing to meet those needs and show some hospitality in the name of christ and ultimately that's what we want to do is we honor christ and bring god glory uh, through the way we treat others and through the way we use our our homes and our resources that God has given us. And so I want to thank you for listening to our conversation today. Um, we have a heart uh, to to get out God's Word and to understand God's Word and what that means in our lives and how that works out. And so a lot of the times these, these podcasts are just going to be conversations among us in a room. We'd love for feedback if you want to to email us at the church office or leave a comment on the episode. We'd love to have this be part of a a, a discussion. And sometimes these podcasts will 
will intersect with the sermon series. Uh, sometimes, like this podcast, they won't. <laughs> something that maybe is is on our mind, or something that we think is important to br- to bring your way as as we sit down and discuss these. But we really do appreciate you listening and giving feedback. Of course, as any podcaster will tell you, um, rating the podcast goes a long way. It gets it and in the inbox of other people it gets it at the top of certain lists and so we love if you listen to spotify apple any any uh, way that you're getting this podcast to go rate it as you've listened to it and we just really appreciate that and help get the word about out about the podcast and the things that we're doing but most importantly we're just uh, thankful for you listening today and um, just have a great week thank you for tuning in to ncc unplugged If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 